Okay, here we're going to start uh, our conversations on uh, constructing optimal risky portfolios. This is integral and this is the idea of diversification. We're going to talk about diversification quite a bit. Uh, the idea, of course, you know, you've probably seen this term, you've, you're probably familiar with it. The idea is we can take our portfolio of some set size and divide it up into um, uh, more assets. So, you know, I, instead of having a portfolio with two assets, I, I say, you know, this $100,000 portfolio, I split it among three assets, four assets, five assets. This is, you know, becoming diversified, a greater diversification. The idea of this is, of course, that each asset that I'm dividing my portfolio into is not perfectly correlated with, with the other assets in the portfolio, uh, and therefore this is going to reduce risk. What we're going to talk about today is, you know, how, the, how this reduces risk. We're going, to, we're going to look into this a little bit. Um, what a, well, again, we're going to talk about diversification. Um, the idea, of course, in finance is uh, that we are going to be able to diversify a certain amount of risk, the firm-specific risk. Um, so the idea is if we put Ford and Facebook into a portfolio, uh, then there's a portion of the risk in Ford and Facebook that is specific to those firms. So the idea is um, a fire at a Ford plant, Ford stock goes down, but maybe Facebook signs up more people than, than they expected. So Facebook goes up and these, these offset, and therefore the, the standard deviation of the returns in your portfolio is, is less. Um, however, if interest rates go up, both Ford and Facebook will go down. So their diversification will, uh, in finance, it's going to help to an extent, but we cannot diversi diversify away the, the market risk, the risk that interest rates go up. So, last thing I'll say before we go into this particular case, um, keep in mind, you know, I heard uh, after the 2008 financial crisis, people say, well, um, you know, how could I have lost money? I was diversified. The idea is if the entire market crashes, that's market risk. And, and what we're going to do here doesn't get rid of that market risk, doesn't get rid of that risk that, you know, that you'll lose money that, because the market crashes. So, to understand the mechanics of diversification, we're going to look at a portfolio of two risky assets. This is, uh, we'll do this simply because we can write out, you know, the algebra of this. Uh, and it generalizes uh, to n risky asset. So the idea is what we see here um, is what we'll see when we, when, we, when we actually create portfolios with an arbitrary number of assets. So the idea here is we have two risky assets, A and B, uh, then the return on our portfolio, the return on P for our portfolio is just the weight in A times the return in A plus the weight in B times the return in B. Uh, the weights being a constant, this means the expected return on our portfolio is just the weight in A, the expected return in A, plus the weight in B, the expected return in B. The important thing to look at and note here is that the expected return on the portfolio is simply the weighted average of the expected returns of the individual assets in the portfolio. So it's just an average of the returns on the assets in the portfolio. Uh, the, the variance of, of this portfolio uh, is going to be equal to the weight in A squared, uh, the variance of A, plus the weight in B squared times the variance of B, plus 2 weight, weight A, weight A, weight B, covariance, returns on A, returns on B. Again, this is just from, you know, simple probability. Uh, now, uh, the covariance, if, if you remember, the covariance um, uh, is equal to the covariance of two, uh, of, you know, uh, X and Y um, is going to be equal to, um, I should just use, I see, I'll just use what we have here. The covariance of the return on A and the return on B is just equal to sigma A, sigma B, uh, and the correlation coefficient between A and B. So if you remember, this is what the, the covariance is. Um, so, uh, it's convenient, I'm just going to replace this here with um, this term, sigma A, sigma B, the correla you know, row here being the correlation coefficient between A and B. I may drop the A and B in the subscripts there later. So this is the, the, the um, portfolio uh, variance. Uh, now, one thing that you should notice here, right off the bat, is that the expected return on the portfolio does not... Uh, is not affected by how these assets behave relative to each other. So in other words, the expected return on the portfolio is, has, is not a function of the correlation coefficient, whereas um, the, the, the risk on the portfolio is a function of the correlation coefficient. So to see what's going on here, let's assume the correlation coefficient, the greatest it can be is 1. 
So for now, let's make the assumption, of course it will never really be one, uh, but let's make the, uh, the assumption that the correlation coefficient is one. In this case, if the correlation coefficient is one, then the variance of the portfolio is equal to, now you can factor this out, and this is going to be weight in A sigma A plus weight in B sigma B squared. Of course, what this means, this implies that the, the risk, the standard deviation of the portfolio, is just the weight in A, standard deviation of A, plus weight in B, standard deviation of B. So, what you can notice, in this case, if the correlation coefficient is 1, then this, the standard deviation of the portfolio is simply the weighted average of the individual standard deviations in the portfolio. So, in other words, here, no diversification. The, the, the standard deviation is the weighted average, the expected return is simply the weighted average. However, this is the greatest the correlation coefficient can be. In general, the cor co correlation coefficient is going to be less than, less than 1. So, um, again, for here, assume the weights are positive. Um, and um, it's, not, um, it's not terribly important. We can generalize it to b being able to short. But uh, assuming the weights are positive, what this means is as the correlation coefficient decreases, you know, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, then the standard deviation of the portfolio is going to be less than. So the idea here is um, if we have uh, a correlation coefficient, something less than 1, then the standard deviation of the portfolio is going to be less than the weighted average of the individual standard deviations in the portfolio. And that's the effect of diversification. The idea is when we add assets to the portfolio, we are not necessarily uh, losing expected return. However, we are reducing risk. So, and again, um, the, the risk reduction is a function of the correlation coefficient. Um, the more, the lower the correlation coefficient, the more risk reduction. So, we can have something, let's say it's a correlation of zero, you know, two assets with a zero correlation. Um, we don't lose an expected return, but our risk will be, will be substantially lowered. Uh, so, this is the effect of diversification. Now, you can see this, usually this is shown something like uh, on, on the expected return standard deviation plane. So if we have standard deviation, we have expected return here, then we could say we have two portfolios, A and B. So the idea here is, in the case where the correlation coefficient is 1, expected return is, uh, is weighted average of the individual expected returns, standard deviation, weighted average of the individual standard deviations, therefore this is, you know, where we could invest. So the idea here is by varying the weights, we can invest anywhere on this line. You know, I put all my, I put everything in A, I'm investing here. If I put half my money in A, half in B, I'm investing here. And, um, and you know, all my money in B there. So the idea of this is there's no diversification benefit. However, like we've shown, if um, the standard, if the correlation coefficient is less than one, then the, sta the standard deviation of the portfolio is less than this. So the idea here is, as the, the correlation coefficient declines, you know, our, our, we can invest on, so again, you know, this might be I invest 50% of my portfolio in A, 50% in B. So, you know, this might be something like, uh, I'll make up a number here. Let's say this is a correlation coefficient of 0.7, right? And this is a, co you know, correlation coefficient of 0.9. So if the correlation coefficient is 0.9, I can invest anywhere um, on on this line. If the correlation coefficient is 0 0.7, I can invest anywhere on this line. As the correlation coefficient declines, um, your, your opportunity set, where you can invest, this line becomes better and better. Note, this is better. The idea here is, um, as the correlation coefficient is declining, we get, we, you know, this, this, prefer, this portfolio opportunity set is preferable to this one. The idea being here is if I draw a line, each of these has the same expected return, right? It, this is the expected return on this axis. However, this portfolio has the least risk. So the idea is I'd much rather be here than here. Uh, again, this comes back to us being risk averse. Uh, if I'm going to earn the same return, I'd rather have less risk. So, uh, now, um, so now what I've done in the interactive lecture notes, I actually put a little um, sort of widget up that you can uh, that will plot this. So in other words, you can put in the expected return, um, the asset expected return, standard deviation, uh, and then you know move the correlation coefficient and, and it'll plot your portfolio opportunity set. Uh, an interesting thing here is in the case, of course, 
we, we have no diversification benefit if, if the correlation coefficient is one. We get sort of uh, the most diversification benefit we can get, uh, on the other hand, if the correlation coefficient is negative one. Um, this is actually interesting because if the correlation coefficient is negative one, we can set up a risk-free uh, portfolio, um, a portfolio with no risks. So just to show this you know, very briefly, if the correlation coefficient is, um, is negative one, uh, then of course, you know, I'll just write this here. This becomes a negative, and we can factor this out by saying, okay, then this is standard portfolio equal to weight in A sigma A minus weight in B sigma B squared, which implies the portfolio standard deviation is uh, the absolute value of weight in A sigma A uh, minus weight in B sigma B. And we can set this equal, we can, again, we invest on different places on this opportunity set by changing the weight. So the, the idea here is we can choose the weights. We can, we can um, set this equal to zero and solve for the weights such that the portfolio, portfolio standard deviation is zero. Uh, to do this, you know, um, see, you know, see how my algebra is. But uh, note, uh, of course, uh, that the weight in B is equal to 1 minus the weight in A, right? So uh, what this means is if we want to find the weight such that the portfolio standard deviation is equal to zero, we solve this equation. Uh, weight in A minus 1 minus weight in A uh, sigma B, again, setting, setting this equal to zero. We have uh, one equation, one unknown, so it's solvable. Uh, now the idea here is this is going to be negative standard deviation of B plus weight in, you know, this, so this is going to be, um, this implies um, weight in A sigma A uh, minus sigma B plus weight in A sigma B equal to zero. Moving the B over to the other side, factoring out the A's, what this should mean is we get the weight in A is equal to um, uh, sigma B, weight A, uh, uh, sigma A plus sigma B, sigma A plus sigma B. You can check my algebra on that. Uh, so, uh, of course, the weight in B is just going to be 1 minus this, right? So the weight in B is simply 1 minus this. So if we put this amount of A and 1 minus that in B, we should have a, ri a risk-free portfolio. So the idea is the portfolio opportunity set for a correlation coefficient of negative 1 is going to look something like this, where it actually intersects with um, the, the axis here. So there is a point where, with a standard deviation of zero. An interesting thing to think about is, let's say that this is this is here is eight uh, percent. One thing, uh, one question would be, um, can Treasury bills there then have a yield of four percent? Right. Um, uh, think about that. Of course, you know. If, in other words, if I can set up a risk-free portfolio, can it have any different expected return than? Um, uh, and again, it, it's a, it's um, we know we're going to get eight percent. So there's you know there's no uh, no standard deviation. Um, can it be any different than the risk-free treasury bill rate? Good. So uh, this is again the idea of the mechanics of diversification. Um, what we do next, and it's actually not too hard, but I'll leave it to another lecture, is we have to find some optimal place to invest. So we have to find some way to say that's the best place. You know, given that this is a correlation coefficient, because there's only going to be one. Um, one of these sets that we can invest in. So, you know, uh, the idea of what we're going to do next is we have standard deviation, we have expected return, we have, you know, n different assets, we're going to construct this portfolio opportunity set, and then we have to decide where is the best place to invest on that portfolio opportunity set. That, um, that's uh, where we talk about markets. Um, uh, good. Excellent. So, I'll leave it at that.